Hello everybody and thank you once again for joining me for this video. Today we are going to do the sealed Dominaria event. My name is Justice, my handle is Sarcantu, and remember to subscribe for content like this. I do deck techs, I do all the events, I do uh, a lot of advice for the free to play or in other words budget player. Now I'm going to recommend that if you have the open budget for this event you make that happen because Dominaria is a terrific set to play in. Uh, it's a great set to open packs in, uh, and these sealed events are well worth the expenditure of your gems. I've got 2,400 gems saved up. I'm going to spend them on this event. I realize that that puts me in a predicament coming up for War of the Spark. I will have five weeks or so to save up my gems, um, and I may have to be on the hook for some, some cash. You know what I'm saying? So if I had... After spending 2,000 gems on Dominaria, 440 left, that would put me in a position to have to spend 10 bucks on the sealed event for uh, War of the Spark when it comes out, which I would do. I would I would drop the 10 bucks on that. They are not planning on. Um, well, let's take a look at the other gems. Y yeah, I mean, it looks like it'd be 10 bucks no matter what if I wanted to do it that way. And it looks like at this point they are not wiping our collections. They said so online. I've heard anecdotally from a couple of folks that they have had their collections wiped, but they, they've they announced, anyway, that they will not be doing that. Plus, if you do buy gems, they will hand you those gems back uh, gem for gem. It's just kind of a bummer if if they, for whatever unforeseen reason, would have to do that. Uh, but I don't think they will. I, I think they're going to go forth and not have to do some uh, collection wiping. And this being a sealed event, it gives us a pretty good chance at winning a couple of games. So if we get to five wins, I will get 1,600 gems back. And that would still put me at that 2,000 mark. And that's if I get five wins. That's going to be pretty tough to do. Um, and Dominaria is a terrific set. I love this set. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And there's a lot of powerful cards in it. So we're going to be up against folks who are who are also pretty good at, <laughs> at sealed events. And I didn't get a chance to play Dominaria on paper. Yeah, I, I missed the Dominaria sealed events. I did get a fat pack. Um, open that up and that was a lot of fun, but I did not do a sealed event. So let's drop the gems on it. I'll go to town. We'll open up our packs. Oh boy. The Antiquities War. Karn's Temporal Sundering. This is like the old school uh, version of Nexus of Fate, right? Where you exile it after you take another turn. Kamal's Druidic Vow. So, other than Multani, nothing great. Multani's pretty strong. The Fall of Thran. Ooh, and Jasu. Okay, Jasu's workable. So it looks like we're going to go green and black if we can get away with it. The Antiquities War is good, but you've got to have the right mix. So I don't know that we're going to have it. Let me see if I need to hide, hide the camera. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and hide this thing. Let's see if that worked. Yeah, we're good to go there. So, I'll build the deck, and then we'll just see see what we're on here. My white uncommons look pretty nice, although there's a lot in here that you use in, like, Mono White Aggro, too, from Dominaria, so it's confusing. Blessed Light isn't bad removal. Let's take a look at the blue space. Weight of Memory. This is cool. They're all having a little argument. Karn's Temporal Sundering isn't terrific. Homeward Explorer. Unwind is cool. I'm actually surprised we don't see Unwind more in uh, Constructed. So I like Jasu for sure. Final Parting is interesting. And a Cast Down, so we've got some removal. That's nice. Okay, so here we go in the red space. Shiv and Fire is good. Fight with Fire is good. Okay. Okay, okay, maybe we could go with some red creatures. Run Amok is interesting because I could run Amok on like Jasu, for example, and then have Jasu, who's already got Menace. He's now like swinging in for seven. Frenzied Rage. Okay, so I like the red I have in the commons and uncommons so far. Yep, yeah, I believe we can splash this. At the beginning of combat, for each aura and equipment attached to Valduk, create a 3-1 red elemental creature. Interesting. Hey, and ooze! Hey, wait a minute. Whenever crows of ooze... I didn't know there was oozes in Dominaria, so now we could combine this with, like, the ooze from, uh... Um... 
Ravnica Allegiance. That's pretty funny. Although it's just a 2-2 ooze. I guess you don't get much out of that. Fire Intervention is interesting. Okay. Okay, cool. I like this. <clears throat> Creature gains reach until end of turn, but the counter stays. One of those. Okay, so I think we're good with maybe a three-color deck. So I'm going to add some greens here. I like a couple big creatures. I'm just going to add them, see where, where we land. Look at the top X cards of your library. You may put any number of land under legendary permanent cards with X or less from among them into the battlefield and put the rest into your graveyard. That's got to be strong, right? I mean, actually, if I go with, like, a lower cost. But let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Um, Gaius Protector must be blocked, if able, so that's kind of a nice way to get some other creatures through. I like Bailoth Gorger with the kicker. Lanowar Envoy. It's still a two, uh, a three-two, so that's okay. I don't know that we'll have any synergy here with uh, Spore Crown Thalid. I like Gift of Growth. Uh, it's sort of like Titanic Growth, so I'm gonna take that. I don't. Then it fights. So put a plus one, plus one counter on a target creature if it's a legendary. Then it fights a creature. So I don't like that as much. Halar? He's a three casting, three, three with trample. I think we go with Halar. Yep. He's Halar good. Okay. I think we'll go with him. Um, green looks pretty strong for us. And it's doing the auto land thing. Is this it? No, this, this is it. Okay. That's all we got. So Jousting Lance gives him 2 plus 2 plus 0. We like Jousting Lance. Uh, I don't like Blood Tallow Candle. Navigator's Compass. I've seen that used before. I don't hate Sparring Construct either. But let's see what else we got. I like, I like what's in the red space here. So I like Fire Elemental. Big creatures tend to work well for me in draft, so I, I like them. Um, not, and not draft and sealed. I, I'm better at sealed than I am at draft. Like, I feel like I don't have to make the decision on what to take, and that helps me out as a player, because I don't, I don't have to worry about, well, should I grab this one in the draft or not? Um, <clears throat> when If you control another wizard, though, and I don't think it's worth trying to go with, like, the Chronicler just to have the wizard synergy... And I don't think I have enough kickers. Actually, I don't think I have enough kickers. I'm going to go with Warlord's Fury. That's good card draw and good damage. Run amok for sure. Okay, cool. And then Josu. What are we at? 33? This is going to be pretty janky, but I'm okay with that. Cast down. Final parting is search for two cards. Put one into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Search your library for two cards. One goes in the graveyard, one goes in the library. I'm on the fence with that one. Dark Bargain is decent card draw, Soul Salvage, return two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. So Vicious Offering for sure, if for removal, right? And Rat Colony is a no, and I'm not going four colors, we're only going to go three, five, six, and six. It gives us 17, and we didn't get any special lands out of the deal. So oh, these kind of kind of crappy packs, right? I like the Fall of Thran for like Spirit Control, I'm going to put that together. But other than that, the white and blue are out, I think. Yeah, this is the best opt right here, and this should help out my vault progress pretty good too. I'm at one sixteen already, it it ticks up. the The longer you play, the longer that the vault does tick up for you. So I'm gonna have to include the primordial worm after all. I was on the fence about primordial worm, but the more I look at the deck, um, I like Arbor Armament. I don't see a problem with Adventurous Impulse. Let's look at our creature base. We've got nine creatures and seven instant or sorcery spells. So we have got to fix that. We do not have enough creatures at this point. Okay, I like Keldon Raider. Forecasting 4-3. Four, That's good. Also good card draw. So maybe now I could take out um, like Warlord's Fury. Hmm. I don't hate that they get first strike though and it's card draw. I'm going to leave that in there. Wild Onslaught, that goes in the deck for sure. 
Gaia's Protector probably goes in the deck. Okay, so hang on a second now. Let's take a look at what we got going on. 11 creatures ain't enough. I want 15, so we'll cut four instant or sorceries. Adventurer's Impulse goes. Oh, Jousting Lance. Boy, that's just too strong to, to cut it, though, right? Gaia's Protector, Wild Onslaught. I like, I like, I like. Hmm. <clears throat> Kamal's Druidic Vow. It kind of counts as a creature, doesn't it? Because if we do... If, if it's like turn, say it's turn seven, and we do two green and five, we'll look at the top five cards, and almost all of the cards in the deck <clears throat> could be cast at five mana. And we're at 40 cards, and we're at 11 creatures. But I feel like, I feel like that's not enough. Well, you know what let's do? Let's play it and see where we land. I'm going to change it. This is like... Who is the... That's a Halar deck. Well, there's nothing with uh Nothing with a kicker. Fight with Fire has a kicker. Gift of Growth has a kicker. There's like two chances for him to, to tick off. So, three. There's not a lot of kickers in here. <clears throat> so I don't think... Oh, maybe there is. Yep. All right. It's Halar's show. Let's see what we got going on. Let's try and win a game or two. If we win two games, no matter what happens, we get three more packs. If we win one game, it's 400 gems. We get 200 gems back right away. So that's actually kind of nice. I like that. Um, and hopefully, with any luck, we can squeeze away a couple of wins here. Oh. We will see what happens. Uh, something that I also do uh, better in sealed for some reason is I kind of know my deck a little bit better as I, you know, just built it a few minutes ago. But when I draft... I tend to forget what I have, <clears throat> tend to forget what I'm going for, tend to forget, or or I'll have to make a tough choice and draft with what to pick, and then that really messes up my day, and I'm just like, man, I should have picked everything but what I picked, and it just kind of, I kind of don't like it. This is a slow start, and we know from my own history that I do not do well with super slow starts, though I don't know if I have... This is a pretty good mana base. It gives me four mana right away. And then I could Druidic Vow for two on turn four if I'm not dead. And I, you know what? I'm going to do it. Consider this an experiment game. I'm going to see how Kamal's Druidic Vow actually works in the real world. And if I do it for two, there's a good chance I get something. could really use a black mana for my one cast down, but I'm going to use this selectively because I don't have a lot of removal. I do have... Okay, so we got a hand out here. I'm pretty sure Halar is... He's Halar dead right now. He's going to get fighted with fired or otherwise pricked down. He's going to die. Oh, he's got blue also. He can't be cast today. He's not playing black anyways. But now I could Gift of Growth with the kicker and then trip Halar. He will get a counter and deal one damage to the opponent and then attack for six, seven, eight, actually. Oh, yeah, so the Goblin Barrage takes care of that problem for our opponent. And, okay, well, we'll just start playing creatures then. So the slow start didn't really hurt us because our opponent also had some sort of a slow start, which is fine. And these aren't ranked. In ranked draft, we tend to get punched in the face pretty hard. So th he's got a block with his Cloud Reader Sphinx. He has no option. Which I'm going to use my uh, Gaia's Protector as that kind of removal. I'm totally fine with that. If I draw into a land, I may Kamal's Druidic Vow for three. Or I might save it. I don't have the black. Um, yeah, so we're just going to... Draw, attack, he must block, it's not optional, and then we uh, we move on. I could Gift of Growth, but I think I'm going to save this for, for a home run. I think. I think that's the right play here. Our opponent's got four cards in hand, so he's having... He doesn't have too many plays. We've got to grow the Lonely King. That is not, not ideal. He's legendary. So we can't cast him down. And he's going to attack for 10. I 
That's kind of nice. Hmm. It's not ideal. I don't think I can go taking 10 damage this early in the game on turn. I mean, it's turn 5, but we haven't had enough plays yet before I can just start taking 10 and getting pissed off about it. That's grown as strong in draft. Man, I wish I would have got one. I always thought this card was fairly underutilized. Because you could attack with Grun, he gets the counters, and then you could play Galta, like off the Grun. I got one of those too. Hmm. But now if I draw a Swamp, I can't. I can't Vicious Offering because I don't have the creature. Oh, okay. Alright. Well, three colors isn't working out for me very well. I'm pretty sure we're toast. I'm pretty sure. So he, if he attacks alone with, with Grun, he gets the counters. If he doesn't attack alone, then we can block and kill him. Unless he's got some other trick up his sleeve. But obviously you just attack alone and force me to deal with that. Well, I'm not going to block. I'm going to take the 10. And then I think we're just going to cry about this this one. We lose to Grun, game one. Especially if he's got... Seven. He's got seven mana, so if he has a fight with fire, he won't be able to. If Academy Drake, so he plays the kicker. Yeah, this is not going well. We could offering, sack the creature, take eight, cast down next turn. Druidic vow. I mean, we have to take care of. It's an instant. Yep, so let's attack. So let's get the timing right. We'll attack because we can. He blocks. So, okay. I was hoping he didn't block and I could get some damage in there. I could... Gift of Growth. Yep, I'm gonna have to do this. It's janky, but I'm gonna have to. Without the kick... Oh, oh hang on. I wanna see what land it's tapping. Good, good, good. Okay, just make sure it doesn't tap my swamp. Right? Um. It doesn't get counters. It does untap. I'm gonna have to Vicious Offering. Yep, okay, so I, I have to Vicious Offering. Sacrifice my Elemental. So I've just, it's just board removal at this point. Just to give me a chance at coming back in this game. This is... This is tough to deal with right here, this big boy. Cool. Okay, only four damage. We're not dead yet. Oh, another Claw Breeder Sphinx, huh? Okay. The Flyers are strong. All right, let's see what this Druidic Vow can do, if anything. He's scrying two, which is very nice to have in draft. Uh, if I draw into a fight with fire, we're alive another turn. So that's something. Put all creatures. Any number of land or legendary permanent. Oh, legendary. Wait a minute. Oh. Oh, okay. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to edit my deck after this. This card kind of sucks. I get it. Mm. Yep, we're going to Warlord's Fury for the card draw into a mountain, so it's totally irrelevant. Okay. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do... Oh, it's a legendary sorcery. You can't cast it if you don't have a legendary creature or a planeswalker. Uh, this is this is not not the ideal setup here. Okay, so the Druidic Vow has got to go. I don't think I even have, uh, other than Halar, uh, I don't have too many legendary creatures happening. So we'll replace this with um, either a Flyer or something that can block Flyers, like Reach, something like that, for example. I do have Multani. But I would want to use the Druidic Vow to pull Multani, not the other way around. And he does have Reach, and he would be pretty huge right now. 
nice. That's nice. I like Song of Freilies. Not too bad Vicious Offering won't take care of that. Okay, so that's pretty much the game then. Okay, no reason to continue on with this one. We'll make that edit to the deck and see if that actually makes a difference. Uh, we might have just got beat. I don't. I was not too thrilled with my rares that I got. They were mostly crap. Um, let's edit sealed deck here, and we'll take out. We'll take out Kamal's Druidic Vow. And we'll look at. I'm, I still feel pretty good about leaving white out. Although, yeah, I mean, there's not too much. There's Gideon's Reproach, which is decent removal. Um, but I feel like, I feel like the color base is correct. Let's look at our flyers. Yeah, no flying so far. Okay, so can we get any flyers? I mean, Jehoras familiar, but that's, that's a forecasting 2-2. Two, two. Garn of the Blood Flame. Gives everyone haste. A little pricey. But I am playing red and green. Dark bargain. Wouldn't have helped, wouldn't have helped, wouldn't have helped. Little too... Bloodstone Goblin is a two-casting 2-2, two -two, which I don't hate, actually. Um, and also has some kicker synergy... Three casting, three two. I like the idea of getting Bloodstone Goblin out of turn early. It's just a two two at this point, though. It's not going to do too much in the way of of damage. But maybe if we can, again, my goal. I'm not trying to win all seven games. I'd just like to get a couple of wins in there uh, for the extra gems. Like you get the difference between zero wins and one win is almost 200 gems, I think, or something crazy. So it's like, you know, if we get, if we stay at zero, which would would not be great. Um, could happen. Two two losses away and we're toast. Okay, so here's another slow hand. But I've got all the mana I will ever need. And then it's six turns, so I'm going to hang on to this and figure, with any luck, we draw into the creatures or spells that we need because we have six land in the, or five land in the starting hand. Um, although this is almost as risky as keeping like a one land hand because sometimes you don't get anything. He, so he went with Navigator's Compass. It's an interesting choice. Because I've seen people use this before. But I don't think it's been... It's, like, really... I guess in, in draft it might come in pretty handy, because you want to do... Say he wants a planes, he could switch it to a planes. I'm going to put a Imperial Lan a Jousting Lance on my Primordial Worm. Just a 1-3. So he's trying to get some anti-aggro out there. Uh, yeah, we'll drop the lance, and we will just hold our hold our worm and our cast down. The uh, Gitu Chronicler is not worth casting down. So hopefully he doesn't have too many dangerous creatures up here that start coming out. Like a third third turn Adela's maybe, if he got one. Uh, that would be insanity if he drops Adela's on our faces, because that would be a lot of damage. When we're on boy, okay, I like this. We'll drop a 3-2, and then we can put the Jousting Lance on him. And then he will be a 5-2 with First Strike. It equips for 3. I'm good with that, although he might have some trickery up his sleeve right here. A blink of an eye, perhaps. Uh, uh, Shivan Fire, I think, is the would kill him. This Gitu Chronicler by himself doesn't really worry me. What worries me is all this untapped land he's got. Okay. Okay. A Juggernaut. Juggernaut attacks each combat if available, if able to. But now my creature loses first strike because it won't be my turn. So I say we actually cast down the Juggernaut, perhaps. Well, we could Vicious Offering the Juggernaut. You know what I want to do? I do want to start on the damage train here. So 
So he attacks for five, I attack for five. Trading life at this point is not very wise because he's higher than me. Um, so he does not block, which means he probably has some tricks up his sleeve. I don't like that at all. But I do have a cast down, and Juggernaut might be my cast down target. I do have a Primordial Worm. Primordial Worm just handily blocks the Juggernaut, which must attack, so he doesn't have the choice of leaving it back as a blocker. Here comes something. So he's tapped some mana, two blue and a red. And another red. Three blue and two red. That's five mana, so here comes... He wouldn't he wouldn't have to kick like a Shivan fire. Skizzit. Nice. Did he pay the kicker or are we just are we about to take a bunch here? He didn't pay the kicker, so we just take a bunch once, right? I don't think he, he afforded the kicker. Unless he had the five the fifth man. I didn't see it though. Okay, here we go. So we could cast somebody down. Why don't we do that? Why don't we cast down the Juggernaut? And why don't we fight with fire on the Skizik? Just regular fight with fire. And we're at 8. I do not like being at 8. But after this turn, we can have the Primordial Worm go down and hopefully do some things, maybe. Uh, it's a big scary blocker, if nothing else. Uh, we're going to save our Vicious Offering for... We might use it as a response to Cloud Reader Sphinx doing stuff. I will still attack because my Lana War Envoy is a 5-2 with first strike. So he can he can gang block and won't, won't do a damn thing. I'll kill his Cloud Reader Sphinx. And that's a flyer, but I'm not going to worry about it because he takes... If he takes the 5 from my Envoy this turn... He will be on the hook for lethal with Primordial Worm down, so he's going to have to make that decision. He holds back a blocker, which is fine, so we drop... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm, fa I'm ha happy with this. I'm happy with this. Yep. There is no shock in this set. There is a Shiv and Fire, so he could Shiv and Fire my Envoy. But now I've got a really scary 7-6 with no Trample. That's okay. We drop the Envoy. Perhaps he blocks, perhaps he doesn't. Okay, the fact that he's blocking says to me that this card is not something that he could use to get himself lethal or get the attack through. So maybe he has to hold the Sphinx back as a blocker now. We will see. He also drew a card, so that's not great. No, a Navigator's Compass doesn't do anything anymore other than turn lands into other lands. He got a Hinterland Harbor. That's terrific. So he attacks for three. I'm at five. Uh, there's some direct damage he could have in there that I would not like to see. Okay, cool. Okay. Instant... Instant, good to go. Let's swing in with everybody. Um, in either case, I'm going to Vicious Offering the Thorn Elemental. Unless he doesn't block. There's a chance he doesn't block, and then we Gift of Growth and win the game. He doesn't block. Oh no, he's assigning blockers now. So we're going to Vicious Offering. His Thorn Elemental becomes a 5-5. Five, five. Our 5-2 five, with First Strike kills it, or our 7-6 kills it just with regular damage and doesn't die. And there's no... If this gave them Trample, I would happily do it instead. But because there's no Trample involved, no reason to kick her, we'll just make him a 5-5. Five, five. He doesn't have any cards in hand, so I'm not super worried about him sneaking in with some... 
some shenanigans. First strike damage there went through first. Okay, okay. Cool. Now hopefully he doesn't draw into lethal. Uh, I'm at five. You know, there's a lot he could draw into, especially with green and red. Uh, but hopefully it's a bit of a slow play for him and not direct damage. Not a, a plus two buff for that Cloud Reader Sphinx. Uh, if it's a land, we've won the game. He's gonna, if he attacks, it must mean he's got something crazy there. Okay, so. Multani. I feel like. I feel like we gotta play Multani instead of. Well, let's see what happens. Why don't we attack? This is risky. It's a tight game. This is a tight game either way. So we'll attack. He blocks one of them. We will Gift of Growth without the kicker. Because that would be lethal. He might be sitting on a counter spell. And if that's the case, we're still okay, sort of. Because. Oh, I think we're good. Okay. Whew! <laughs> Close. Cool. So one win in. That's that always makes me feel good and sealed to get just one win, because this could be anybody's game. Hey, we're getting some quests done too. I've uh, I've saved them up over the course of the past few days just by accident. I've got a quest to do some. Okay, yeah. So it's like 200 gems for zero wins, then 400 for one win. So it's 200 per. So if we get one more win, I will be very happy with that. Uh, I I mean. Sealed is, I feel like Sealed is the most level playing field of all the game modes to play in. Um, even more than Popper. Like, have you guys noticed that too about Popper, especially in the arena, where you go look at all your commons and you're like, man, I, I need like 20 commons to make a good Popper deck and I've only got 14 wild cards to do it. I go first. I don't have a. Uh, forest. I'm okay with that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this going. I haven't mulliganed yet. I've got Multani in hand, which is cool. I like this a lot. This is pretty strong. Um, oh, you know what? I could have gone like Multani, and then uh, <laughs> I could have gone green white and added the Fall of Thran and let the Fall of Thran do its thing, and then Multani still has his counters. I could have done that. He must have something in there. He's got a uh, Shivan Fire. This is our fourth mana. So if we draw into two more, we're on for a 5th turn Fire Elemental, a 6th turn Multani. He's a 6-6 six, six with Reach and Trample when he comes out. That's hard to deal with in Sealed. He can't be casted down at that level, at that power and toughness. He can't be, um, like, the removed by counters. There's nothing in here that would do it. He's not hexproof, but that's okay. Okay, so we got the second mountain that we needed. And I'm gonna hold off my attack for now. We got five forests coming up, fire elementals, that'll be nice. One forest, specifically. We will need the forest to make this happen. There is no tender shoot dryad in this set. There, There is only the fungus. What are the odds that he got like slime foot and can really, can really make us pay with these uh, saplings? Hmm. I feel like this is bait, but I should also block. Because I have some nice creatures coming, and the more I can handle his board right now, the better the better I think this game will go. I don't want to pay for all of this with my life total. Oh, and there's Jossu. How? Okay, so we've really got to draw into a forest next turn. I don't think there's a chance we get the kicker off, so I, I think we'll play 
we're on for fire, fire elemental next turn if we don't get any mana. If we get that forest, we go Multani. And then the turn after that, depending on our draw, we go Jossu. So if we don't get the forest for a couple more turns, we still have a couple of plays. We get Vicious Offering. That's the card I was thinking of. Vicious Offering. Okay, so he's on for some serious defense right now, which is terrific. Okay. Okay, so we have another one. Wasn't the uh, forest we're looking for. So Multani's going to be a 7-7 when he comes out. I could have also included Final Parting and Multani. Grab the two cards, grab Multani, and another card. Discard Multani, bring him back. It's actually kind of a nice combo there. More removal, fight with fire. Okay, more removal. Alright, alright. Okay, we're gonna go with Josu here. Not with the kicker, unfortunately. Put a plus one plus one counter on each creature. Four, so it's eight. We're at six mana. So Wild Onslaught may not get kicked, but I think with Multani and Josu out with kickers on them, they get a lot scarier. I come on, he can't have another like removal spell. Okay. Also, um, he can't block Jossu. So we're going to Warlord's Fury just to draw the card. He gets first strike. Big deal. We get a Swamp. I'm going to save the Wild Onslaught for later. He doesn't have Vigilance, but he does have Menace, which is nice. So I could do any other creature I draw into is pretty scary. Except for my worms. Garna. He didn't lose Garna this turn, did he? He didn't. Or lose any creatures, rather. So now all the creatures do have haste, which sucks, but is what it is. He's got six mana. He's running Garna. We could run Garna. Oh, no. Oh, wait a minute. So if he kicks that, and I have to discard, I discard Multani. Oh, it discards two cards. And we'll go ahead and do this. We'll return the uh, two swamps to my hand. If, if Multani hits the board, this is going to be pretty scary. Hopefully that happens. He can block Jossu now with these two, and I and would only lose Garna. My Wild Onslaught should have been cast, but I didn't realize he was playing Caligo Skin Witches. That's fine. And they all have haste. Okay, cool. So we got Multani down. Here we go. Okay, we're both at 10. This is risky. I know I tapped Jossu to, to pull that attack off, but I don't think he's going to throw anybody at Multani unless he's got the removal for it. If he's if this is some sort of awesome removal spell, then he's going to walk away with the victory here, and that's okay. Or he's not going to attack at all, and he's going to have to figure out how to deal with my 7-7 seven, seven Multani next turn when it comes out. And I'm going to throw everything at him also. This still will not um, will not kill Multani, just only damage prevention. So we'll play the lands that he can see, 7 and 11. I don't think we'll get punished too bad. He's got a gang block Jossu, and I don't think he'll do that in favor of taking 7 damage. He may he may block with like Garna and Caligo Skin Witch or something like that, but all this trample's got to be resolved, and he knows it. Yep, I can't kill Garna. He's done that math, so he takes a grip. Alright. What are the odds that this is a 7-1 a creature and I die? 
or a return all creatures from your graveyard to the, that doesn't exist in this set. So at seven, at eight, um, he's going to lose Garna. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Doesn't have the mana to kick that. Okay, so that's that's it. They can attack with all of these, sure. He saves them, uses blockers. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, this is nine, right? Yeah, so next turn we win. I keep, I always think fight with fire is 10 mana for 10 damage. Um, it's too bad. Oh no, he kicked his druid. Right. Right, he's going to kick the druid. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so why don't we play the worm and attack with Multani? He opts to take it all, which says to me he thinks he might be able to swing in for some lethal damage. And I don't like that idea. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. He's two away from lethal if he resolves Primordial Worm. Which he could do with a cast down. So why don't we use Fight with Fire on Garna instead? That's five damage. That's dead, Garna. Okay, now he's got to figure this out instead. Multani tramples. I'm happy with the trample. Elfin Druid. Okay, cool. This we can do. Just swing in for 10, save our Primordial Worm as a blocker. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So he can absorb all 10 of this damage and lose every creature on the board. And Multani tramples. Super deadly. He blocks with Croissant Druid. 5, so he's going to go down to 2. That's pretty risky. So now he goes down to... Yeah, it doesn't... Uh, let's kill the Druid first. Doesn't matter. I get that, but I want to make sure that druid dies. It didn't die. Oh, it doesn't have to... Oh, I... Oh, right. I should have assigned more damage to it. My bad. My bad. Okay, so it was Blayloth Gorgers a 7-7. Seven, seven. He's at 2. This pesky guy's got to go. I think I used my cast down. I did not. So I still have a cast down I could use on Blayloth Gorger. Seven, eight, nine. You know what? I feel like risking this. Let's just swing in with Multani and see what he does. Okay, now, now, let's, can I assign the damage? Nope. It's not going to die. Hmm. But that's okay. We will return the tap lands back to my hand. Return Multani back to my hand. Yep, and then cast him again. This is a cool, but I don't think it's going to last him in the long run. So Matalani's going to be 10-10 again. Does this untap? Mm, it gains reach instead, which is kind of nice for flyers. But I think we're on. We've got a lot of pressure cooking right now. 
if he kills Multani again, I can bring him back. My Primordial Worm does not kill his Blayloth Gorger at this point. I don't think he attacks. Yeah, I didn't think so. Mm, so we cast the Mountain. We cast down this guy. Our opponent should concede at this point. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's a good game. It's a darn good game right there. It's nothing nothing he can do about that last cast down. We kind of drew into the perfect card in that scenario, and we are well on our way to getting some quests done. This is terrific. I like two wins a whole lot, especially in sealed, man. That feels pretty good. If you can start winning in the limited modes and drafting and sealed, it feels really good. And constructed, constructions can be a bit, you know, janky if you have a good deck idea or you surprise some people. You can get a lot of good wins out that way. Um, you know, especially if you just look at the top eight decks and you see everybody's playing, is it Drake's, Mono Blue, and Sultai, and you come up with something that counters all three of those in one deck. Well, you stand a pretty good chance at, at climbing the ladder and Nick at night. <laughs> That's old school. That's some respect right there. Well done, sir. All right, so we're on for a good Shivan Fire and the Lance and Halar, but I don't have the green mana. I'm going to I'm gonna go for it. I'm doing it. I'm drawing into some nice land bases, and I think if we can hold the Shivan Fire till turn five... And then drop uh, Halar on turn, hopefully turn three. So turn two, Bloodstone. Turn three, Halar. Turn four, Jousting Lance. Turn five, Shivan Fire with the kicker. We could be in business. But we did not get to go first. He's got a unicorn. Those pesky unicorns. So now do I block with my goblin? If he, Or do I... Shiv and fire without the kicker on the unicorn. Another combo I love is the unicorn riding the Pegasus into battle. Hmm. So he wants to save him. He thinks. There's my gorger. Rats. That did not work out for us like I wanted it to. Pegasus Courser is very strong. Makes two flyers that I don't like. But I also don't like him having such a good board advantage on me at this point that I think I need to cook this Mesa Unicorn so I can give my Goblin, uh, make him a 4-2 with first strike. But let's see what he plays. I might Shiv and fire something else. Nope, he's doing this to me. Okay. We don't have a choice. We could, if we do the Pegasus Courser, then we lose, uh, we don't, we don't kill him. And there went a card with a kicker. Ooh. Man. That's terrific. Too bad you must die. Didn't want to risk it, right? I could have equipped my lance and seen if he blocked, whatever. He, there's no way he blocks. Um, she's too strong. Do not want him creating knights. There we go. See, so now he's got a knight Pegasus with Vigilance? Doesn't have Vigilance. So I'm okay with letting that ride for a turn. While I make a 4-2 Bloodstone, I can cast down or just play my scary 5-4 Elemental. Or if I draw a forest, I could cast down and Halar. Sergeant at Arms is just a 2-3 that will fly with the help of the Pegasus. So, okay. Decisions, decisions. Doesn't first strike. Why don't we attack first? See what he does. I feel like I feel like playing this fire elemental will apply some pressure. Gosh, this is risky. Um, I don't think we're going to take 13 damage, but he could resolve my non-flying creatures and then as a byproduct, he's got something in there. He's got a cast down. Uh, and as a byproduct of having this 5/4 out, maybe he does something differently when Grace Act like do I discard? Oh, it's a self-mill and a life gain. Okay. 
And now he he flies and he flies. Okay, and I can Halar. Okay, this is good good mana use. But I don't have a kicker. He's gonna fly anyway. So I'm on the hook to take five and be at three. Oh, come on, game client. There we go. We're gonna kill the wind grace. It's three for three either way. I realize that he's making a flyer, but in either case, this way I can put some pressure on my opponent and change his thought process a little bit. See, now he's at four. He can't leave me open, because uh, if I play anything with a kicker, which I, which I won't be able to, but if I did, he would take one damage. Halar would be a 4-4. Four, four. He also tramples, um, so he's got to be respected, and it's going to change his attack. Hopefully, that's my goal. It's hopefully to change his attacking and maybe he might save some of these guys uses blockers. Cool. Oh man, I can't afford the kicker. But I've got to get the creature down. So I'm going to play it without the kicker. That's fine, I guess. And then I'm going to attack with Bloodstone. I'm going to attack with everybody. He's got a block. How is he going to block? He's going to block... Okay. If he blocks Pegasus to Halar, then then neither one of... Well, then he could block Cabal Paladin to my Fire Elemental and then lose uh, his Sergeant at Arms to the first strike damage of, of my Bloodstone Goblin. So I'm going to attack with everybody. I feel like this is pretty safe for now. Although if he has a cast down, he has to block or he dies. So he, I lose my Bloodstone Goblin and my Fire Elemental, but that's it. He loses two of his creatures, and we are going to give the Lance to the Gorger right now. So 6-4 with First Strike is pretty scary. Cast Down doesn't help him out too much like I thought it might. He attacks... So he can't attack okay, this game. Cool. Boy, another close one. Another close one. Very happy about how this is playing out. That's going to be three wins. Thank you, thank you. After that first loss, I didn't know how good we would end up doing, but glad it's turned around. I go first again. Okay, here we go with the mana. <laughs> I, I like I like the future of this hand here. This is nice. Multani. We've got a Kelden Raider into a Fire Elemental into Multani. Ah, uh, this could happen. I've got a Vicious Offering. However, no black mana. But we are not going to mulligan. That's not how we're doing this. Any land I can fight with fire. Uh, a mountain in any land by turn four, I can uh, Kelden Raider. And then I could discard even Multani and then draw a card and use this. This is actually Multani is sweet. I take it all back, buddy. You're awesome. Why don't we see this in Gruul more often? Hey, wait a minute. Like, you could Multani with the Flame of Keld, and then he comes back. You return land back to your hand. You cast him, and then, and then give him, like, Riot. Like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He needs another look here, this guy. Oh, boy. Oh, this hand just got slower. Hmm. <laughs> well, hopefully this isn't like some uber aggro awesome pack that this guy got. All I can do is shiv and fire something. He doesn't have any sagas, but that's cool in a saga themed deck. I like that. Okay, Danatha. Okay, so she dies. Inst yep. This is not something we're gonna do here. She's way too strong. Oh, boy. Oh, no. The mana screw is happening. Okay, well, we could Vicious Offering if we get a black. If we get a any color mana, we could fight with fire. So if we get another green, another red, we can fight with fire on this. A war caller. I'm not too scared about the war caller for now. 
Although now, now we're taking some damage, so I'm gonna have to resolve one of these two guys, and I like the... I want to get rid of the Sergeant at Arms first, just because I'm feeling like that's the bigger threat. And then we can Keldon Warcaller, or Keldon Raider. This is the Warcaller. This is the Raider. We can Raider if we get any mana. And I feel like that's a safe play because, uh... Because we don't need a Vicious Offer anything just yet. We can save that for a minute. And if we start getting some land, we can Fire Elemental. Into some... Oh, oh, poop. Oh, that's not great. And he's got Menace. Oh, and a... Oh, no. Well, this does not look promising, does it? I'm pretty sure this is going to be loss number two. Yeah. Okay. We have to Vicious Offering the Sanctum Spirits. So we don't want to be taking three. Perhaps I should have cast a creature instead there. Yeah, I think I'm on for Keldon Raider next... Well, ah, yeah, yeah, we'll get it. This guy's got Menace, though, so that sucks. Yep, I should have Gorgered and then blocked with Keldon Warcaller and given myself one more turn. They don't have haste, do they? It's still, this is game. Yep. Yep, yep. Hmm. Yeah. Two, four. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Okay, we lose. He attacks with three, two, twos. That's all, that's all it's going to take. We block one, we take four. He's also got a three, four that would, would mess us up pretty bad over there. All right, all right. Three and two. Three and two. And we already, we got 1,200 gems back. That is terrific. So we're looking for, got the three wins. Super happy about that. With I would argue that that these packs were not, with the exception of Multani, and maybe I mean you could even do like Selesnya colors, like Multani and uh, Fall of Thran. All your lands go away. Blue screen, no death. Boy, I hope not. I go first. Gorger, Jasu, Onslaught. Ooh, I like. I like. I don't like everything stops at three lands though, <laughs> but. Hey, we'll see. Okay. Maybe it is the blue screen of death. Does he have a thing? Or is he like me and doesn't have a thing? Sapling migration. Okay. Oh boy. <laughs> These three color decks. Okay. Last time I did Seal, they went two colors and it worked out a lot better. Um, it depends on the cards. You know, I probably could have done two colors with like white and green, but I felt like the uh, the red and the black cards gave me a little more power. I don't know. I might have been able to win more than more than three games. Maybe I could win this game if if uh, I draw into some land, perhaps. Okay, Lenoir Envoy. That's decent. I could use the Lenoir Envoy's ability. He's gonna get Shivan fired, though. Without a doubt, he Shivan fires this Lenoir Envoy. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I'm not that scared of the life gain because Multani gets huge if this game works out. Any red mana source, I play Halar. Any black mana source, I play Jasu. Oh boy. This is awful. <clears throat> this is awful. If this ends up being a loss, this is a terrible way to lose. I, I hate losing to mana screw. Although I probably should have taken a mulligan. It was it was four, 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 six mana cost spells. So it's kind of on me. But that's nice. You got all the sapling swarms. Memorial of the Unity, that's cool. This is seven damage. I've got one turn to resolve all of this. Boy. So we're on for five, unless he has any other damage help in there. We're toast.
There it is. That's the game. Go for it. Swing away, Meryl. Not bad. I mean, three and three. That's a 50% win rate. You know, and sealed, that's pretty good. Pretty good. Can't be too upset about this one. I would have liked to go seven and zero, oh, but hey. You can't win them all. Unless. Unless you win them all. 1,200 gems back, so the risk didn't exactly pay off, but over the next few weeks, I could turn my gold back into some of these gems. And uh, and that's why I think this is this event is well worth the expenditure of those gems. And you get three more packs of Dominaria, and we hardly ever actually buy Dominaria. So it's kind of nice to actually get these packs, get these cards. And you open them up, you get credit towards your, uh, you know, your wild cards. A Tashar, okay. I'll take it. Wild card. Another Dauntless Bodyguard. Need those. I used wild cards on them, but whatever. It's fine. Goblin Barrage. Okay. Thorn Elemental. We saw that guy. This is this is interesting. It's expensive, but... Mirari. Cool. Mirari's still viable. And if this was paper, I'd be hoping for Tefiri, because he's worth a lot of money. But I'd like to see a Karn. Or a uh, Rada. That's cool. Rada's good for... Uh, Rada's pretty good for, uh, like, Gruel decks. You know, you get all that mana. Be kind of cool. So there you have it. There's the event. Uh, Dominaria Sealed. And let's look at our wild cards. Uh, 116 Vault Progress still. So not, not too bad. Looking at uh, pretty good Vault Progress there too, you guys. Thanks so much for watching. I do appreciate all the support you've been giving me. Have a good time. And once again, do this event. This Dominaria event is well worth it.